This game between the Seattle Mariners and the Cincinnati Reds was a perfect example of why hustle always pays off. And this truly was one of the best games of the entire season. There was unbelievable plays that were made, and we're going to break down every single one. This is Game Face Sports. My name is Mitchell, so let's get straight into it. Starting with, quite frankly, a play I might have never seen before at the major league level. We have the top of the second inning, a runner on first, the steal is on. We're gonna have a strike him out, throw him out, double play here, and watch the base runner at second base give up and start to break down before he gets to second base. We're gonna play it through the first time so you can see it, and then we'll go back through and talk about why this is totally unexplainable. Strike him out, throw down the second, tags him out, Call them out. It's over. Double play. End of the inning. Great tag. Great throw. Perfect execution here, right? But watch the base runner right here. Watch the base runner going into second base. I've never seen a guy break down like this. He looks like he's starting to, to chop, break down, and slow down going into the bag. I've never seen that. The only thing I can think of here is maybe he feels like He's overrunning second base. So if he tries to slide, he's going to slide past the bag. And then in that case, you'll get tagged out anyway. So maybe he's trying to slow down. So when he slides in, he sticks on second base. But that's the only thing I can think of because there's no reason to be chopping your feet and breaking down when you're stealing second base. Either that or you got to be better about your timing with stealing. But just slowing down and chopping your feet like that, I've never seen it. I think it's definitely i think it's definitely some careless base running because i can't imagine there's anybody in baseball that thinks stealing second base is easy enough where you could just like break down and chop feet not at this level i think that's a little nuts if you've seen something like this before let me know because i've never seen anything quite like that next noteworthy play here we're gonna have a runner on first with two outs Class A is up to bat. This play is important because you're going to see a perfectly executed relay. Um, what's going to happen, he's going to hit the ball into the gap with the runner on first. Everyone on the field knows there's a lot of different names for this. It's either called numbers, truck and trailer, relay, relay. One of those things is called something like that, where you have an extra base hit into the outfield. And everybody knows we're immediately, with the runner on first, we're cutting four. The play's going to be at the plate. We're trying to save the run. Watch the relay. Watch the throws. We're going to play it through again. Watch the whole thing in its entirety. Well, after you've seen it, then we will go back and break it down. Great hit into the gap, too. Beautiful. Juicing. They're waving them around third. Throw comes home. Play at the plate. They call him out. They call him out. The umpire must not have seen that the catcher dropped the ball over there. They do go back and change the call and reverse it. He is safe. But this is a beautifully executed, executed play here. And let's break it down. Now, again, you see the ball in the outfield here. Center fielder is going out with his back essentially turned to the infield. That's called numbers. It's called numbers because when you are the cutoff man, the shortstop, or the second baseman, you see the outfielder's jersey numbers on his back. That's how you know it's an extra base hit and you need to plan accordingly with a base runner on first. The key difference is now you're going to have somebody trailing your cutoff man. So the center fielder is going to get the ball and you see right here, I'll put arrows up on the screen. That's the shortstop and that's the second baseman. The second baseman is there for two reasons. One, because it's a longer throw from center field in case the throw is a little bit offline and he needs to have the shortstop backed up. The second baseman is there to get it and back him up on the throw so it doesn't go further into the infield and allow an easy run to score. And it also stops the hitter from getting a triple instead of a double if he overthrows his cutoff man. The second thing that that second baseman is in charge of is communicating whether or not he's going from three to four and if there's a play at the plate. He sees it and he's going to let him know, hey, you're throwing four, throwing four, throwing four the whole time the ball's coming in. And we'll see here, it's a beautiful throw, hits the cutoff man. They throw it home. It looks like they would have had him if they just would have held on to the ball here, but the catcher can't quite hang on. It's a tough play to make, but they executed it well. Just can't quite get the play done. Next great play, we're going to have a line shot to center field, and Julio Rodriguez is going to make his best catch of the year so far. And what's crazy is this play you're about to see is actually not even the best play of this inning. Watch this. Rips a shot. Those are tough to read. 
Julio almost overruns this thing, goes out and makes an unbelievable catch. But you can see here, Julio is so fast. He gets such a good jump on this ball. It looks like from here where the ball is and where he's at, he's got no chance to get to this thing. But he almost overruns it and has to come back and make that jump back over his head catch because of how far he runs for this thing. But that's why he's a gold glove outfielder. It's beautiful. So unbelievable catch, right? That wasn't even the best play of this inning, though. Watch this play. Runners on first and second. We got two outs. Top of the seventh inning. We're going to get a base hit to center field. And this right here is one of those rules and one of those baseball moments that for some reason is super, super under taught. And a lot of players don't actually catch on to what's really going on here. But we're going to have a, an amazing play to third base from Julio that's going to not only end the inning, but save the run from scoring at the plate. Again, we'll play the whole three, the whole thing in its entirety. And then we will go back and then we'll break down the key moments of this. Here we go. Line shot. Julio gets a great jump, rips the throw into third. Amazing tag by the third baseman. Gets him just in time. And they wave off the run. Does not count. The runner scores from second, but they don't count it. And here's why. Again, this is why hustling matters so much. Okay, so you got the base hit going to center field. The runner on second right now knows I'm going four. It's four all the way. Rounded. Now watch the home plate umpire here. This is key. A lot of players in lower levels don't understand this about the game of baseball, but the home plate umpire knows the situation. But for some reason, the runner on third does not know the situation. If this base runner on this rounding third right here can sprint and touch home, before the player gets tagged out going in the third base, this run counts. He has to run and touch home plate before the third out happens. If he can do that, this run scores and it counts. They keep it. But watch, the base runner is going to slow down before he gets to third and the home plate umpire is going to watch the angle. He's got the angle to see the play at third and to see when the base runner is going to touch home plate. Watch what happens. He starts to break down and slow down before home, which allows the play at third to happen and get him tagged out before he touches the plate. Home plate umpire says, no, nope, run does not count. He didn't touch the plate before he was tagged at third. Great awareness. Great job by the umpire here. Great play by Julio at third. Well, we're going to play this back two more times. Again, watch the base runner rounding third. About four or five steps before the plate, he's going to start to chop his feet and break down. Right there. That's See, if he had sprinted through, he might have got this run to score. Now we'll play it back again and watch where the tag is made and where the base runner is. Tag is made right there. Tag is made right there at third. He's out. And the base runner is about a step and a half away from the plate. Had he sprinted all the way through, Probably gets this run to count, but he slowed up. And this is why hustling always pays off. You always, always hustle. Probably one of my favorite moments of the year right here. We have Stanek, the relief pitcher, coming in for the Mariners. And he's going to absolutely put his body on the line to try to make the final out to end the inning. This is the top of the ninth inning. Runner on first. There is two outs. And we're going to get... A ground ball to first base that Ty France, for some reason, cannot handle. And the pitcher is going to mostly have a heads-up play here, but he does put his he does put the full hustle into it as a pitcher cover to first base. Let's play it through, and then we'll break it down. Can't make the play. Pitcher coming in, dives to make the tag, and just misses him, calls him safe. But you want to talk about a pitcher putting his all on the line for a play here. Now, as soon as that ball is hit to the first base side, the pitcher at this point, it's tough, but should be making his rounds over to cover the bag at first. That's general mechanics. First baseman's got to get the ground ball. Pitcher should be doing a pitcher cover, running up the first baseline to go cover the bag. It looks like he's a little late to notice that here. It looks like he's a little late to it. 
Ty France can't handle the ball. So he's going to have to, the pitcher's going to have to come in and take this weird angle. Typically, hopefully I can show arrows here. Typically on a pitcher cover, if the pitcher realizes it as soon as it happens, he's actually supposed to be running alongside the baseline here and not running at a straight direct line angle to the bag. It's more dangerous that way. When you take this straight direct line to first base like the pitcher is right here, it's actually a little bit more dangerous because you are at some point are likely going to cross that first base path. And he's either going to get stepped on in a lot of those situations or just get flat out ran over when you cross the base path, which is why typically you want to see your pitcher come around, make like a banana type angle, rounding up and then running alongside the first base side. But either way, pitcher looks like he's a little late, gets over to try and cover it. And honestly, not a whole lot of pitchers are going to do this. Like this type of effort, this type of risk, I'm going to go ahead and say 90% of MLB pitchers are not going to put their body on the line like this. Like unless it's the World Series or a playoff game, I don't think they're going to do it. This is the type of play that a guy makes at this level as a pitcher that makes me want to buy his jersey. I instantly have so much more respect for this guy to lay out like this and try to make a play um, that he's now become one of my favorite players on this team. I might have to buy his jersey. Call it what you want. I just love hustle. And it also shows the difference between somebody that understands how important hustling is and somebody that doesn't earlier on in the game that we saw. So he does not quite make the play. They do call him safe and the Mariners go on to win this game. The pitcher is not injured. He's totally fine. I just wanted to appreciate the hustle. He almost had him. And that right there is the difference in effort you love to see between teams. If you watch to this point and you enjoy MLB and baseball breakdowns, please consider subscribing so you don't miss any more of them. I'm going to be doing these all year with the Mariners as well as other teams in big important moments. If you really, really like my content, I want your advice. I'm thinking about doing a baseball X's and O's series where I break down basic mechanics as well as like special cases, plays that are made. For example, all the different like relays and cutoffs, all the different pitcher covers, all the different plays that happen on the field that a lot of people that don't watch a whole lot of baseball or have played quite fully get an appreciation for. Because I think the people that don't like baseball that much don't understand just how much thought and like mechanics and, and all nine guys being on the same page, how much of that has to happen for a team to be playing good baseball. And I kind of want to put together a series where it's called baseball X's and O's special plays that guys make bunt scenarios, relays, cutoffs, all kinds of crazy stuff and scenarios. If you think that's cool and you think I should Leave a comment below and let me know. I want to see if people would watch it. Thank you guys so much for your time, and I will see you in my next breakdown. Go Mariners.